All right, greetings and salutations. We back um, new energy for the divine masculine this week. So once again, my energies last like six hours to six weeks, maybe longer. So that means like I don't know six weeks, six months. You can come back look at this video and it still applies. Really, you can look at a video that I did four or five years ago, and it might still apply. So when I do these readings, it ain't just current energies. Because, like I said, the good the good ones, those good divine psychics, our shit, it's a message at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? I don't just have to heal and help you for this week. Like, it's hella messages. They're all good, number one. Number two, it's something I probably could have said three, four years back. That probably applies now. Or maybe you understand it now, or maybe you get it now. So, you know, don't be too much into these energies as in they just current and these like dissipate like fart or something like that. Like, nah, these are messages at the end of the day. Okay. So, no further ado, let's just get with it. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, right? And we're going to get to the divine masculine situation. Yeah, that's Swartz. Thoughts, decisions, mentality, ideology, the direction you're going, the decisions you're making. Everything starts with the mind. Then we got cups. Shoulders. Cups are feelings and emotions. All feelings and emotions are just indicators on where you're going mentally. What's indication? Mental. Who was the heart and mind department? The divine feminine, you can tell. And you got the divine masculine realm, which is wands. What's your actions and behavior? What are actions and behavior? Things you're doing, things you've done, not what you finna do because you ain't did it yet. What you've done got karma and accountability attached to it. What you're doing has karma and accountability attached to it. What you finna do don't mean a damn thing. Okay, who's the king of wands? The divine masculine. You are masculine. So, pinnacles, feet, wands of the knees. That's how you get moving. Pinnacles, which are manifestations, are defeat or defeat. Victory is in defeat. Defeat, but also defeat. You know what I'm saying? Both pinnacles. Your feet are pinnacles, and defeat is a pinnacle. A pinnacle. P I N N A C L E. Now, pinnacles, diamonds, which are not out here, which is cool. Pinnacles are persons, places, and things. These things you taste, touch, see, feel, and hear. All pinnacles or pin pinnacles or pentacles. Uh, have expiration dates. Pinnacles expire. All pinnacles are temporary. This world is temporary because it's a fourth, like it's a third dimension. You know, when people ask me what the world is, I just say it's a temporary space and time where all things expire. You know how many species went extinct on this bitch? You know how many plants? How many fish? How many animals? How many races are extinct? Off top, I could think of, let's see, the orange race, the green race. I can think of about four races of humans that's extinct or have been dissolved into the other races. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just, you know, it ain't just plants and animals that go on the endangered species list. You know what I'm saying? Races, whole races do too. So, um, yeah, this body is a, is a, is a pinnacle. It will expire. My eyes are pinnacles. They're going to expire. Being able to smell, being able to taste, being able to hear, being able to fuck. You know what I'm saying? Everything has its time. Everything has its time on this temporary space in time we call the world. Don't get too geeked about shit here. And the world is just a speck of dust in the ocean that is the galactic universe. Don't get too caught up. We've been hella places. We've been alive for eons. We've been hella places. Just makes no sense to come here and this be your last stop. <clears throat> All right, let's get to the message. First kind of this message, masculine, we got the three of swords. What does swords deal with? Thoughts, decisions, mentality, ideology, the direction you're going, the decisions you're making. First off, aces to tens are karmic cycles. What karmics go through all day, every day. Divines, we go through karmic cycles too. But we also go through divine cycles. How does a divine move in an infinity? 
we're doing work on earth, we're doing work in the kingdom of heaven, which is the fourth, fifth dimension, which is infinite. You got an infinite realm, which is where God at, which is where home is, which is the heavens, and then you got this temporary space and time where we're at right now. We do more work. Because shit we gotta do for others, shit we gotta do for God. Shit we gotta do for our people, and shit we gotta do for ourselves. The average person is just doing what the fuck they gotta do to survive like an animal going in circles and circles like a gerbil or a hamster or a dog or one of them things just running up the motherfucking shit. <laughs> Only animals survive. But even animals aren't doing more than just surviving. You have to have a purpose. Purpose lies in the infant. You can help yourself all motherfucking day, but when you start blessing other people and get the blessing from that, or say you ain't helping a motherfucking person, you just going in circles and circles and circles. All right, when that karma come here and like a, 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 a belt in your car just overlaps with the fuck you got going on, it's going to be a lot of bullshit coming your way. You know what I'm saying? We got to do what we got to do in the world, but we got to do what we got to do in the kingdom of God. We got to do what we got to do to survive, but we have to evolve and do more. As a divine, you have to do more. Feminines know this. Masculine, I'm just telling you. If you ain't on your divine duty, if you ain't on your path, if you ain't on your purpose, if you ain't doing what God told you to do, if you ain't found out what the fuck it is God needs you to do, if you don't know who the fuck you are, you find out who you are quick. You know who you are. It's accepting what you are is this the big issue. I'm ready. Let me shut the fuck up. It's all in mind anyway. Swords. First cardio message. Overall energy, which I ain't gonna put too much energy on, okay? This is just fairly important. Pain. A lot of you masculines are going to pain. Mental pain. You see it's the sword, right? It's mental, because pain is mental. It's shot monks out here that don't feel pain, right? Yeah, they can literally do push-ups on a bed of nails. Can walk on uh, hot coals and shit. Motherfuckers catching bullets with their teeth and shit. You know that one monk that you always see who's like sitting there getting kicked to the nuts and can't feel shit? That's painful. Kick me in my nuts. I'm gonna be uh, balled up like a little bitch on the floor. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, pain is mental. You train yourself to not feel it. Like Dark Man. You remember Dark Man? The superhero Dark Man back in the day? I know you remember that movie. You know what I'm saying? It was Dark Man 1, 2, and 3. I had all three of them VHS. VHS tape. Dark Man was my shit. The nigga that played the mummy was the shit. He played Dark Man, but Dark Man was my shit. Hey, he couldn't feel pain. Part of superpower. <laughs> pain is mental. If you suffer, it's only in the mind. Or you actually got actual pain, like your liver hurt and your knee hurt and your back hurt and your teeth hurt and something hurt. And it's got you tweaking because it's in your head, you know? Why are you in pain? I said I'm going to put no energy in it. And it's going backwards because you're going backwards mentally. You want to go from the 2 to the 3 to the 4 to the 5. You don't want to go from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> you want to progress in life. We don't want to digress. You want to ascend in life. We don't want to descend. Life is not a straight line. Life ain't a circle either. That bitch is a spiral. And you either ascending in this spiral or it's a downward spiral. We spin up and down all day like sperm. You nigga, we've been spinning since sperm, son. That's how we move. Spiral through life. Coming in this bitch or coming down from this hell. You know? So, it's mental. You in pain because you're going backwards. Pain is going past the point of no return. Two of Swords is the decision. Two of Swords represents, this was clarifying the three. Two of Swords is free will, options, or fork in a row. Free will, which we all possess, options, which we all have, and choices. You can either go up, it's only one right way. That's up. What's up? God is what's up, right? What's up? The heavens, right? What's up? The universe, right? What's up? Any other realm past Earth, which is a temporary space and time where all things expire. And what is going up anyway? It's mental. It's war. 
What is being woke anyway? Mental sword. Where does God dwell? Your mind, your brain. This is what God is. People be looking for God, but you know, God is in your brain, so he ain't too far. He could be a she, she could be a he, you know, I'll be rocking here. God is mental. Pain is mental. Having options or not is mental. Free will is mental. What else is swords? Seven of swords, that's truth. Truth is mental. It's something you register. Truth is, right? Pain is something you register, right? Mental. You don't know you hurt until you, it's like most people who get shot. Man, Joe, you all right? You all right? What is that? I think I got shot. Then they start feeling the pain. Like your kid. You know what I'm saying? Like you pull their teeth out. They don't know. They don't feel no pain until they see their tooth out their mouth. Then they get the crime. Or that late ass baby reaction. You smack your baby hand for grabbing some shit. And, and the baby just looking at you like, like, did you just hit me? Then it feels the pain. Or like somebody swipe your nuts. And you don't feel it till later. It's, ah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all mental. Everything is in the mind, right? So, overall energy. You're going through some pain. Because you had to make a choice. You're going through pain because you was at a fork in the road and you had to make a decision. Three of Swords is dealing with that decision. It's going past the point of no return. You can say you're going to leave somebody all day till you leave them. And even when you leave them, you got to stay gone. So this process, I like to call it like the Toby Kunta Kente slash running away from the plantation energy. You know what I mean? It's like a slave in the plantation. Hey. We got choices. We got options. We don't have to fucking sit here and be slaves. This ain't living. I heard about the Underground Railroad. I heard there's people that can help us get free. Free? Massachusetts looks good here. I don't know what you're talking about. We eating good. We got shelter against the elements. You know what I'm saying? I don't see the problem here. What? This ain't living. We got options. We free will. Free. Will. We can be free if we got the will. If it's a will, it's a way, right? Like, you talking to the preacher to the choir. Talk to your damn self. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to go now because you're trying to get people to go with you. You're trying to get your wife to go with you. You're trying to get your kids to come with you. You're trying to get your parents to come with you. You're trying to get people to come with you who ain't ready to go. What, you going to stay a slave? No. You're going to make that difficult choice. I can go somewhere else or I can stay where I've been at. You choose to go. Now, once you leave the plantation, once you pass the gun line, boss, ain't no coming back. Even if you come back, you're going to wish you never came back after they put the whipping on your motherfucking ass, whether you run it from the law, whether you run it from massive, whether you run it from yourself. Or whether you're running from God, family, kids, baby mama, whatever the fuck. Okay? It's a difficult choice. So don't, you know, people who, I'm telling you, it's, it's a it's a free will. So anybody that's made a choice to leave you in your time of need, to steal from you and run off in the fucking sunset with your shit, it's mental. They're in the past the point of no return. They did some shit to where they can't come back. That's tragic. It's like a person living on the run. Like uh, Louie and Snowfall. At the end of the motherfucking show. Franklin got damn drunk. Just like his dad. Just completed the whole motherfucking process. Got a son who finna be me, Frank. Hopefully he ain't finna be, uh, you know, his dad and his story. You know? Trauma. Feel me? You didn't have a father. And then you become a dad for your father. Or you ain't even father of your son. You know, completing that motherfucking process. You know what I'm saying? But it's like Louie at the end of Snowfall. Yeah, wonderful life. Had a wonderful husband. You was out the game at one point. You made a choice to get in the game. But then you got in the game and wanted more. Then you made a choice to get more. Now I look at you. Sitting in the state. Feds looking for your ass. DEA looking for your ass. You, you want to run every day the rest of your motherfucking life. That's why Frank said in Snowfall, like, ain't no chains on me. I'm free. All of it. 
He's alive. He got out the game with his life. His uncle didn't. Auntie, that ain't life. He got better life. Frank got a better life. Frank was saying got a better life as a drunk than Louis got on the run. Mom, life, her life gone. You know what I'm saying? When you seen Leon and Frank walking down the street to the hood, when the crack hit, you gotta understand, crack hit black areas like a hurricane. And you can still see the effects from that hurricane today. I seen that when I was, I'm going all the subject, but this is the message I'm gonna get. With the school of Dashville shit, Tennessee State shit. When I first got to Nashville and I seen streets like Jefferson Street, you know, Lishy Ave, you know, like, uh, really Jefferson and Lishy kind of fucked me up. There's other streets that I used to go to, like, like, uh, I lived in a good neighborhood, like, good section, like, Charlotte, and, you know what I'm saying, like, West, you know what I mean, but fuck up places like East, you know, 5th, 4th Street, like, not in the motherfucking bars downtown, we talking, like, the projects next to them bitches, like, when I seen Jefferson Street, I just drove down that street, like, I, I literally walked from Tennessee State all the way down Jefferson until I got to downtown in, in, in Cashville, and I just seen, it was just like, God damn, like, and you know, I passed, of course I passed Fisk, because Fisk on Jefferson and shit, so, you know what I'm saying, by the time I hit Fisk, I'm like, I can see it used to be beautiful here, like, I can see it's, like, culture, I can see it's roots in this bitch, but god damn, nigga, like, it just looked like a crack hurricane, fucking tornado, a crack hurricane just came through, it just hit Jefferson, to where, like I say, 20, 30, maybe 40 years later, still see the effects of that or that or that, or that tomato and shit like i say shit choices that was made to 10 20 30 years ago still has a way of affecting shit now hundreds of years ago still has a way of affecting shit now millennia ago it's it's it's, it's decisions and choices motherfuckers made a millennia ago that was meant for shit to be exactly the way it is right now that all shit to say is. <laughs> when you making choices, you move forward. You don't go back. You know where you've been at. So why go back? Somebody wanna stay away from you, call it quits with you. Cool. You know, keep the unconditional love. Fuck with them if they come back. But for right now, it's Donnell Jones. Let them be where they wanna be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But don't go running from problems. Don't go creating the same shit you went through. Because it's a sign that it's like a fucking hamster wheel and you just in that bitch being a gerbil. Why don't you do something new? Speaking of new bottom line message, new energy, we got the seven of pentacles, which is change. It's my re card. R-E-R-E. -E, re this is reversing something. Reneging. Release. Remove, uh, revamp, uh, rehab, relapse, reconnect, uh, redeem, reunite, uh, refill, reread. It's like seven rereads you need to do to change your current situation, Divine Basket. You know? This ain't going backwards. It's just reanalyzing the decisions you made already. Like, damn, I did cut the best person in my life for this fuck who seemed to be making my life better, but at the same time making my life a living hell. Did I make the right choice? Let me let me reanalyze this shit. I thought the grass was green on the other side, so I went there only to see that this shit is dirtier than what the fuck I was. Plus, I didn't really appreciate what I had. Let me return back home. <laughs> Riri. It's like seven of them you need to do. And it's really a lot to do with reordering shit, rearranging shit, switching the shit up in your life. You gotta, like a life is an eight of pentacles. That shoes on your feet, clothes on your back, comfortable bed that you sleeping on. You know, the love's in your life, God is in your life, path and purpose is in your life. You know, your life is what you make it. Life is an eight. This is a seven. What's a seven? That's a C. 
Hold on one second. Doing some readings, man. Thank you right back. All right. So, I told you, Eight of Pentacles is a life. The average person ain't got a life. The average person doesn't have a life. Statistically, look it up. Average person, like how many people are, it's, so there's more people with nothing than it is people with something. America just makes shit look sweet. When right around the rest of the world, I mean, America's more fucked up than the rest of the world. That's that's the that's the crazy part about the shit. But we more broken than the rest of the world. We a lot more worse off than what it seems like other places. But back to change. Bottom line, masculine, you gotta switch some shit around. Because you need to get your life back. And the Eight of Pentacles is an 80%. That's a B. That's a good standing. You're at a C right now. And the only way you can be, get back okay is switching some shit around. Because whatever the fuck you got in your life right now ain't going to get your life back. Dude, whoever you got around your life right now ain't going to help you get your shit back. Like, the way the setup look, the people that's in your life, the place you at in life, and what you want in life is going to keep you right where you at in life. Stagnant. You're starting to see that <laughs> grass ain't green on the other side. You're starting to see who this person really is. You're starting to see exactly where being at this place too long is going to get you. And it's got you. Get to the message. We're going to speed on this shit. <clears throat> shit you don't see, masculine, is the fear you got going on subconsciously and indirectly, either with you or the people around you. Like I said, and just you can be the people around you and living in fear. Putting this fear energy on your ass. And what's fear? That's just making decisions without crossing your T's and dotting your I's. Being mentally discombobulated from the sword before this, which is a ten of swords. What's ten of swords? That's death. Or permanent ending. Death. Or permanent ending. Death, which is the ten of swords. That's mental. Death is something you register, right? You don't know a motherfucker dead until it registers. They can die right in front of you, but until it registers, that they're dead, you're just gonna assume otherwise. You're on Facebook chilling, did you see somebody dead? It registers. Damn. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Another one? It registers. You know they did. You didn't know they was dead until it registered. It's mental. Death is mental. Fear is mental. The only thing you need to fear is fear itself and what that means. When fear into your shit, register it. Okay, I'm scared. Which is a natural energy. But don't let this fucking fear consume you. Motherfuckers dropping like flies around you. Yeah, you should be scared. Because you, you could be next too. I mean, the way motherfuckers is dropping. Alright. Get past that fear. And get to the queen of swords. Which is being ten toes to fuck down on a new direction. Fear. Fear is just a, 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 it's an energy, but it's also a tactic used to sway people to go in different swords, directions. Whether it's an agenda a motherfucker wants you to go to, or like I said, a direction a person needs you to go for them to execute their plan on your ass. You know, fear tactic is used in family, it's used in relationships, like uh, romantic relationships, shit like that. Fear is used by the government, fear is used by kids like everybody can manipulate through fear that's why you gotta recognize fear what it is because when fear come up if a person's scared it's like why like i'm a crook and my homie a crook and we about to rob a bank he's shaking like a bitch nigga we gangsters what you scared of what you scared of going to jail nigga that's a possibility in our lifestyle you you knew that you knew that though you know what I'm saying? But you don't know how to shoot. But you, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, that's not what you been doing on Facebook. I mean, you be off this motherfucking aura like you triple OG, OG low. In reality, you's a bitch. Now you got me scared because you scared. I'm thinking I'm with a like-minded individual. Your scariness is going to get me fucked up. And let's just say we do get caught. You shaking like a bitch. Now you're going to be singing like a bird if we get knocked. You know what? I don't even want to do this shit no more. <laughs> you something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, in reality, you gotta analyze everything. I'm a master analyzer. 
If you're scared about something, it's a reason for that. Okay? Kicking with my homies, we taking we partying and shit, okay, drop my homie off the crib, this nigga scared to go home. Like he did something. Like he don't want to play something. <laughs> we in high school, quiz day. I'm confident as hell. I'm ready to take this test and shit. I got my little Tropicana juice and shit, my little Pop Tart. Cold ass strawberry Pop Tart, you know what I'm saying? I got my pencil sharpener and my motherfucking pencil just in case it's a Scantron. I'm ready. Meanwhile, I'm looking at him, just seeing my homie sitting next to me, his legs tapping, he's just nervous, he just. Nigga scared. Why? Because he ain't studying for the test. People fears can tell you a lot about them. But your fear can also become your reality. Fun fact about me. My biggest fear is dying broke as fuck. Kind of living my fear. <laughs> kind of range there. You know what I'm saying? Definitely not financially where the fuck I see myself being. But uh, seems like, I don't know. And this is a subconscious fear. This ain't even something I'm tripping over. But in the back of my head, it's always been that. So until I change it subconsciously, it's going to be my fucking reality. And like I say, ain't nobody perfect. Ain't nobody Jesus out this bitch. We all working on ourselves. Saying all that shit to say this. Fear. You better get over that shit. You better know what the fuck that is. You better sniff that shit out. Because if that shit is around you, especially if you ain't the one with the fear energy, it's it should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> tell everything you need to know, dog. Let's move on. Because you directly, you got the five of cups. This is loneliness, emotional isolation, physical isolation, or just being a hermit. This is energy you coming out of or going into. Give it your fear. Masculine. It's catch your ass like a crab. Looking like a crab. What's a crab do? It has to have a safe place. They're not going to go outside their fucking shell too long. The only time a fucking crab comes out of its shell is to get a new one. So a crab in reality, we talking about the shell crab. We ain't talking about like the, 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 the crab that's holding a knife and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's just out here. He just got his hard shell and he molts. When he's got a fresh molted shell, he's going to have to hide the way this crab is hiding, but not in the manner that this other crab is hiding. We're talking about a hermit. Hermit crap. They live in fear. When they don't have that thing that protects them, they feel hopeless. They're fucked up. I'm sure a fucking hermit crab that don't have a shell is probably buried in the dirt somewhere. <laughs> you ain't out here swimming, eating good with all the fucking shit that this aquatic life got for you. You living like a motherfucking roach. Because you ain't protected and this invisible protection that is your ship. Master, you gotta get the fuck out your ship. Fear has kept you in a shell. You ain't the person you need to be right now because of this shell. The shell represents what the fuck your family expect from you, what your friends expect of you. One thing about the older generations, the people before me, I'm an 80s baby. One thing about the older generations before me. They try to uphold these fucking traditions and fucking ideologies that their parents distilled on them. We was rebels. I'm not born in 1987. Rebel. My mom called me and damn, huh? I'm that generation. It ain't that man. I mean, I respect my mom over all day, but we didn't have to call her man. We didn't have to, like, my mom didn't give us that. She beat us into fearing her ass like God. I mean, Cause I only fear two things: God and my mother. And uh, you know, she did a good job. You know, laying a foundation of respect and healthy fear that you should have for your parents, for God. You know, for certain things. You know, I see the phone. Okay, you gotta get out your shell. You ain't who the fuck you need to be, like. Because of what the fuck your mom said 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 maybe for some, you stayed in a fucking lane and didn't come off that lane. Because of who the fuck your dad told you you should be. Let's think about the older generation. They had both parents. So it ain't just your mama saying some shit. It's your mom and dad. It ain't just one pair of motherfucking traditions and 
values you're getting from one parent, you're getting them from both. I grew up in the 80s, baby, nigga, rebel, single mother. Yeah, no pops. No, no dad in my house. Oh, and shit. At least for me, I got a brother who got a pop, but you know, we live in a different household. Yeah. It's whatever she said, and that was it. Ain't that how God roll? <laughs> Do what I say, or it's gonna be fire and brimstone, nigga. All right, mom, same shit. Fear God the way I fear my mother. Like, it's the same type of template when it's the single parent. I mean, really, where else you gonna go? Mom says, no, where you gonna go? No fucking where you're gonna have to just deal with shit. There is no other options. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, given the dual options, dual parents, dual, you know what I mean? It's like twice the load. I'm seeing a lot of older people who, like I said, sit in a lot of regret that they should have went this direction in their 30s or this direction in their fucking 40s or should have picked this wife instead of this wife or had kids with this chick instead of this chick, like, or, or, or should have did this instead of doing this, you know? Listening and following other ideologies. If you have your own ideology. When you have kids, you do your own thing. Not too far off your, uh, what you call that shit? Not too far from your foundation. You know what I'm saying? Don't go too far from your foundation. Rebel, but don't, don't leave home. Like, you came up in church, don't leave the church. You came up on God and Christ, don't leave God and Christ. Like, if I was a Muslim, I'd be Muslim. My parents was um, Islam and Muslim, I'd be Islam and Muslim. If my parents was whatever, that's what the fuck I would be. Other than atheists, because, I mean, you got to have God in the picture without God. You, you know, it ain't going to twerk. Life ain't going to twerk right, at least where it need to be as a human being. Anyway, see how I should say this. You let all these ideologies affect you to where now it's just like these traditions, these ideologies, and it's all mental. You can literally change, bottom line, change overall energy, this mental shit you got going on. But you feel like by doing that, you hurt your ancestors. You're not doing what your mother or your father told you or wanted you to be. They're not even here dictating your life from the other side. No, that's not how it goes. They're probably going to tell you, stop doing that. I ain't tell you to do this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just see a lot of older divines, masculines in general, with a lot of regret over the direction that they went in their life. Even to the point where you match your divine feminine. And I was just telling the client this and reading before this. I've been telling my master shit, my divine master shit the past like five years. Yo, this is what the world really is, bro. This is who runs the world. This is like, this nigga, this shit is a matrix, bro. Like, this is how the fucking world really is. Man, you crazy, man. You don't know what you talk about. You need to go back to church. I'm everything I'm not. Only for last days, you know what I'm saying? Nigga finally see. Everything I've been saying, he's seeing on TV. He's seeing on Facebook. He's seeing on YouTube. He's seeing as he's scrolling, watching these shorts and shit. Everything these motherfuckers be preaching about in these shorts and informing you motherfuckers. Divines, we knew about this shit for decades. Like, y'all late. That's what I'm saying. That's what makes a divine to a motherfucking karmic. Divine's been aware. Nigga, my grandma know what the fuck going on. And she in church. And, you know, she in church but know everything. And she told me that shit. I know everything you know. I've been aware of all this shit. I just, her, she's like my mother. And my mom said the same shit. I just stay in church. So I ain't got to worry about that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to get to the new world. I'm just trying to get to heaven. I'm just trying to get to God. All this other shit y'all on, you youngins on, I don't understand it. Like, so I get the older generation of why they stay in church, but at the same time, church is an institution. I'm pre not preaching against it. That's my foundation. If I had kids, they'd be going to fucking church because I went to church, nigga. Church put some good shit in me. However, church is in the people. Church is in you. That's just a fucking tabernacle thing. That's a lot of weird. Y'all think the Diddy shit is crazy? Oh, wait till y'all see the fuck going on in black churches, nigga. Catholic churches, nigga. Schools, nigga. Secret societies, health clubs, and shit like that. Why do you think? I'm just gonna say this and shut the fuck up. Why do you think um, Masonic temples, Shriner temples, Jehovah Witness temples, some mosques have no window? I grew up in church. You remember back in church? It was big ass windows, not stained glass windows, nigga. Fresh light. I remember motherfuckers used to open up the blinds and, you know what I'm saying, there used to be dust and all kinds of shit flying around, but it was natural light. 
in church. I remember that shit. Being a baby, sleep on my mom on fucking lap. Hot as hell from the natural sun coming into church. Then slowly, I just started seeing slant stained glass windows. They build churches with like no, no light. Like, you need uh, access. Church needs access to the outside world. If it's a window in the motherfucking church, if it's a demon in one of these motherfuckers who got in the church, ain't like demons gonna blow up and like the exorcist and shit explode before it walks into the house of God. Nah, the nigga was in the house of God fellowshipping with everybody else before this nigga went crazy when the spirit got thick in there. You know what I'm saying? These people possessed this shit. You know, and then motherfuckers get the faint and shit and they put the white sheet on them and get the plan over them and they tell all the kids to go to the basement. Me, an inquisitive kid. So I'm at the, I ain't downstairs. I'm at the door like, the fuck going on, cuz? These motherfuckers, like, they blew. I, I blew at six years old. City of Refuge, Church of God in Christ. On everything. I see the motherfucker. I see the demon come out of the motherfucker and fly out the window. And my brother's over there, that's what the windows were for. Fast forward to now. You know how many demons is in motherfuckers? Oh, we got mega churches now. Think of all the spirits bouncing all up in their motherfucking churches, bro. Then you got a nigga like Kirk Franklin do a whole performance with his weird asshole. Think of all the spirits that's bouncing around in this church, bro. Well, I don't even go to big churches no more with no fucking windows. Nah, you got me fucked up. Motherfuckers in here just bouncing. There ain't nowhere for them to go. Where they gonna go other than other people? Other than your children. Just saying all this. It's straight as cops. It's too much of life to be finding out than be sitting as a hermit not knowing nothing. Because you ain't just not getting yours in life being a hermit or living somebody else's dreams or being the person that somebody else wants you to be. Like I said, you're just losing out. You're losing out on love. You're losing out on life. You're losing out on the pursuit of happiness. Wrapping you up. As far as the feminine energy masculine, you got the five of wands. The separation or outside conflict or other people's problems or what the fuck another person got to say about you and what you got going on. This shit matters so motherfucking much. Matter of fact, it's in the back of your brain. Fear is in the back of your brain and what the fuck other people got to say is in the back of your brain. In the midst of you being a motherfucking hermit, not yourself, living somebody else's life and ideologies. To not be happy, which is the next card under this. You ain't happy. You separated from the ones you love the most. You living life as a hermit or some other life that ain't even fucking yours with a head full of fear. All this energy right here is energy that was exchanged to you. The people put you in this shit. Yo, situation shit that happened to you, it ain't just that shit happened. Like I said, divine masters are divine masters for a reason. If a divine masculine and a divine feminine just sit down and talk about the traumatic experiences, masculine's gonna have a lot more motherfucking trauma, traumatic experiences than you. Now, uh, women go through shit way worse than men. So we're not saying like the gender aspect of because since a woman was born to the day she died, motherfuckers on her heels. Like think about what the fuck women was going through in like the Middle Ages, you know, in Japan back in the days where they was just taking them. Like, you could be married to a guy. A man of power come through, see your beautiful ass. He just snatch you up, throw you in a box and take you to his kingdom. Sell your, you and your kids to motherfucking sex sex parlors and shit like that. Or medieval times where you wasn't even a person. <laughs> or you sitting married to a motherfucker that got four or five other wives and you just forced to deal with it type shit. Like, like I said, women really sleep and get no rights to fight about 100, 100 years ago. 100 about 100 years ago. About 100 years ago. <laughs> and before that, it's been really crazy. Really crazy for the feminists. So I ain't taking shit away from the woman. Saying this shit. Okay? Um, let's get back to it. You and your divine masculine. Sit down and talk about traumatic events. Your divine masculine went through way more traumatic shit than you. See, you talk about your problems, you vent, you let shit out. You get that shit off your chest, feminine. You get that shit out your heart, feminine. You don't harbor shit because you know what that does. Meanwhile, masculine, complete opposite. That shit festers in him or her because it could be a she, she could be a he. You know how we rock it. Masculine, you let years of shit fester in you. 
and it's going to come out in the form of disease. What is disease anyway? Disease is disease in the mind. If you got disease in the mind, it's going to turn into disease in the body. That's all cancer, that's all motherfucking tumors, that's all motherfucking shit beat. Shit. Fucked up in here. Swore it. What's a pinnacle? Manifestation. Started off disease, this ease in the mind that went all the way down to a full blown disease. Physical. It was just this ease in your mind. Then it turned to a physical disease in your body. Not saying you make yourself sick, because we do have other factors. <laughs> Who's poison, water's poison, weather shit, you know, there's a lot of factors out here that's aiding to the diseases and shit like that. But mainly, think about it. We've been eating poison since we was born. We still here. We ain't grew no horns or nothing. <laughs> no tails or nothing. You feel what I'm saying? Like a human being is a walking talking power plant, nuclear power plant. It's hard to kill us. It's hard to destroy us. They can, like I say, we are trying to get rid of this population for a minute. And what? We as big as we ever been. Like, you know what I'm saying? The human body is powerful. <laughs> you your own worst enemy. You're going to destroy yourself quicker than any other force. You be, you know, you're going to harm yourself quicker than any other thing. So, you know, masculine, it's time for you to be happy. And this is the first time I've ever, ever, done this in a reading. I'm going to just stop it right here. Because the energy you, you finna go into from all, like, you've been through enough, bro. Shit. Like, fuck. These four cards, I just feel everything coming from these shit. So I'm going to recap, and I'm going to wrap it up. Overall energy. You had it the three of swords. This is pain. Pain from what? Going past the point of no return. You was at a fork in the road. And you kept going to the place that you know the most. The, 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 the familiar place. You've been scared this whole time to go to the road less traveled. To go down the road that everybody ain't going on. You choosing the easy route. You choosing the security, safety. Like I say, run around here like a motherfucking hermit crab. Bottom line, that shit needs to change. It's people in your life don't need to be in your life no more. Because since they've been in your life, your life in hell. It's people you kicked out of your life who meant the world to you for some goofy ass reason. You, you, you know, from what mom and dad, family and tradition and religion, like from what the fuck they're saying, you took the good people that were left out of your life. All because they were different from what the fuck you was kind of, like I said, you let your parents, you let your ancestors, you let your motherfucking church, you let your social club, you let your fucking cronies, you let people get in the way of you being who you really is, like who you really are, from you having the people who sh should be in your life right now. It's, I'm talking about a lot of masses are suffering from this shit. You kicked your good people out your life. Your twin flame or divine counterpart included out of your life, people who really loved you unconditionally, who was there for you, who really were angels watching your back. You got rid of them and replaced them with these fuck people that's just taking and leeching and parasiting off your ass. And now you ain't even got enough you for you because you just spread yourself so thin. Change before you have nothing. These motherfuckers take everything from you. Like, like most of y'all in the same boat as everybody else, so it ain't like it's money. <laughs> motherfuckers are taking from you. Motherfuckers stealing your joy. Stealing your ambition. Stealing your fucking energy. They're stealing any plants or chance of you being your real self. Difference between masculine and feminine. Feminine are not gonna let anything outside of him or herself get in the way of what she got going on with you, divine masculine, or with God, or with her path or, or purpose and shit like that. That's the kingdom. You are part of her kingdom. That's why she fucks with you so hard. She's a queen. You a king. Her motherfucking king. And part of her motherfucking kingdom. That's why she goes so hard for you. She ain't got no hidden agendas. The people you got in your life do. The people who you kicked out that had no ill intentions. They wasn't hating on you. They wasn't knocking you. They was supporting you, giving you everything that you needed. But you wanted something more. And this more shit, this grass on the uh, green on the other side shit, 
this, oh, I can't do it because of traditions or my parents or my mother, she was here with them, like that bullshit, like that bullshit is cost y'all. And now it's all that shit fester and it's calling you pain, which is turning into disease right now. Change. So now you need to switch your way of thinking. Head. What do you need to change? Schwartz. Head. This fear that you got that's held you back from a lot of shit. Five of Cups. This hermit mentality. What's a hermit? I'm telling you. Shell. You gotta have a shell to be protected. You gotta have money. You gotta have survivor. You gotta take care of yourself first before you can build with somebody else or put yourself in a better position before you can even be in a position to be like, whatever. It's pinnacles. I mean, not pinnacles. It's feelings and emotions. You change those. Because the feelings that you, and emotions that you got right now towards yourself is hurting other people. If you don't love yourself, you're going to hurt a person that loves you unconditionally. If you ain't got respect for yourself, you're going to embarrass a person who respects you, who res- holds you in high regard. If you don't know who the fuck you are, you're going to be sending out mixed signals, hurting people, confusing them, playing with them. A lot of shit needs to change. That too. What the fuck other people got to say about you and yours? Why haven't, why, you know, you gave a fuck majority of this time and, and look what happened. Why don't you stop giving a fuck? Why don't you stop caring? Why don't you just, why don't you stop caring? Like, you care about what another person think or say about you. How is that benefiting you in any way? It's cost you this whole time. Switch that up. And final thing, you change. Do whatever the fuck you need to do to be happy. What's happiness? That's emotional fulfillment. That's emotional contentment. Or gay. That's emotional fulfillment. That's emotional contentment. Or gay. Do what the fuck your heart's desire. If making you happy is, I don't know, being the person that you really are, <laughs> your family wants you to be a certain way because they kind of seen some shit in your ass to make them go the way they going with you to make sure you are who you are right now. Maybe they sniffed this energy on you as a kid or some shit like that. And here you is, grown as hell, ain't really happy because who you are and who you really are. But you really this. So as far as LGBT side, if you happy, if you're gay, be gay. Be happy. Nigga, because look up the word happy. You see gay in there. Look up the word gay. You see happy in there. They correlate. Be happy of who the fuck you are. And don't care about what the fuck other people got to say about you and whoever makes you happy. That's your blessing. That's your thing. That's your situation. That's your demo. Maybe they wish they can have that and won't. Because they're living the same life you just got out of. (laughs) Do what makes you happy. If making you happy means, I don't know, moving to another country, develop another cultural shit. And your parents are mad because, I don't know, you came to America and became free. Or you didn't want to get down to the traditions and bullshit that they got going on or that they came up with. You trying to break chains and set new standards. And then they can do that. Don't stay where you can't be happy. Or you can't flourish. That's fucked up. Like, make you fast it. Make be happy. Y'all motherfuckers that can like happiness is, like, don't exist. Or happiness is like... Uh, weak or some shit, or like love, or really get you killed or some shit like that. Here, like, a lot of masses are just not happy because they chose to live somebody else's life, somebody else's dream, somebody else's traditions and shit. And it's like you here. It's the last days, so we got a hundred percent. It's the last day, so we probably in a seventy percentile. You've probably lived 65, 70% of your life so far. It's like, why spend the rest of the 30% of your life unhappy that you've been in the 70% once you spend the rest of your life being happy, spend the rest of your life being who you really are, keeping it real (laughs) with yourself and others. Why not? That's the message I got. I hope I could be a good use of shit boy boom. I'm going to holler at y'all soon. One.